Yo, what's the word, gang? Yeah, before I even get to this court footage, let me try to explain a little bit of what's going on. So, first of all, you got Rilo. He basically came in and said that he hate anybody that's involved in the killing of a young Dolph. Now, come to find out, you know, it's been rumors that Big Juke was involved, which is your Gotti brother who lost his life a few months ago. So, turns out he was. Not only was he involved, he put up 100K, you know what I'm saying, to make it happen. And he met with the individuals hours prior to them killing Young Dolph. Now, they, you know, you're going to hear in this court audio that I'm about to play that they talk about how CMG was mad that Young Dolph didn't, didn't want to sign with them. And they attempted twice. And then the diss song started happening back and forth. And then the threats on his life. And another thing we didn't know is is that Young Dolph brother actually did return fire. He ended up shooting one of the dudes. You know what I'm saying? And um, the dude Govan, like, he was the middleman to Big Juk. You feel me? So that's how... So the one guy, Cornelius, if I'm not mistaken, he was buying drugs from, from Govan. You know what I'm saying? He used to buy drugs from Govan. And him buying drugs from Govan, um, straight drop was potentially going to be signed to Govan. You know, signed to Govan slash CMG. He was trying to shop him a deal. So it was pretty crazy, but yeah, this, this is what's going on, man. Y'all get in the comments and y'all let me know what y'all think. But um, let's get to the content. They wanted off under their label. But he turned down millions. I want to do it myself. The second time, they want to talk under their label. But he turned down many millions. I want to do it myself. And in this game, whether it's smart or not, There are things called, it's in Memphis, we call them diss tracks, D-I-S-S. A rap where I may insult, level one of your sort of insults and everything else I want to in the song itself. And Dolph had plenty of those and he had plenty of those directed at this other label, the Cocaine Music Group, at their artist, and at their number two person. His name is Big Joke. The number two person of Cocaine Music Group. Through the years, and I'm talking years before what we're going to watch, having nothing to do with Mr. Johnson on trial, there were highly publicized incidents of violence directed by CMG against all. He even wrote songs about it. Bulletproof. 100 rounds. And he also spewed out the, the disses and the insults. Stop it there. This man here got out of the car with Dom. That's his brother. His name's Marcus Thornton. His brother, his friend. This thing that we're about to watch has had a terrible impact on Marcus. Not just his brother and his friend, but he also works security for Dom. In fact, 
as Marcus walks into this cookie store, he has a gun on his person, and he has another gun in the car. Dolph was well aware, well aware of the threats and the violence from CMG that were constantly hanging over him and his people. We'll wait 30 seconds. drove up, came from this side of the parking lot. He had actually been following Dolph on the street. When Dolph turned uh, in, it went up to this light where it got stopped for a few seconds and then came around. It's a white Mercedes. There's other pictures where you'll be able to see it more clearly. But it's a white Mercedes with back end damage back here uh, on the back passenger side of the car. It's a stolen car. It's a stolen car that our defendant here, Justin Johnson, traded for one car for another at a gas station about 10 hours before this murder happened. This man got out of the passenger side of the white Mercedes. Door is still open. We saw him run to the parking lot. He's here with a large semi-automatic weapon. He's in a hoodie. He's got sweatpants and he's got white shoes. We'll see a second man come out of the car too. Those two men that we're going to see come out of the car, they're going to gun Dolph down. He's inside the business. He has walked over to sort of where the bathrooms are in the business. He's as close as I am to y'all. There's the window, and he's getting shot through the window. Both of these men uh, will shoot. This one in particular, it looks like he's never shot this type of gun before. It's because he probably hadn't. The second man out of the car who's driving is our defendant, Justin Johnson. Neither one of these men are professional hit. It, it looks like they don't take tactical shooting stances it's because they don't. Let's watch uh, Mr. Johnson get out of the car. Can you stop it here? This is Dolph here. Remember, he was wearing the yellow. This is Marcus. Remember, I told you he had a, a gun. He tries to return fire as these two men quickly uh, shoot Dolph. Dolph's body's riddled with. Uh, bullets. He shot all in the back, in the face, in the neck, in his arms. The first man out was Cornelius Smith and he has that semi-automatic weapon shooting wildly into Dolph. The second man out was Justin Johnson who has a handgun who's firing at Dolph as he lays on the ground. Marcus Thornton starts firing back once he hears the, sh the shots. Now we see him emerge from the building. Can't tell in the video, but Marcus actually hits Cornelius in the shoulder. 
um, shoot back. I want to spend some time with two things. This Mercedes, these two people, Justin Cornelius, they didn't fall out of the sky on a Wednesday at 12 20 in the afternoon at a cookie store. They had been looking, they had followed them, and for them, this just business. This was just business. They don't even know each other that well. Let's start with Cornelius. Cornelius is from this neighborhood, Orange Mound. He's in his early 30s now. Cornelius has had serious drug problem. He does ecstasy and Percocet. He gets his drugs over on Bradley Street, just over two miles from the scene, from a man whose name you have heard, Hernandez Gobe. They don't call him that, though. They call him Quet. His middle name is Marquette, and it's shortened to Quet. So Cornelius gives his drugs from Quet. Quet is what in Memphis we call an old head. Older guy. Lives in the neighborhood. Lifelong criminal. In and out of jail through the years. Quet sells drugs. Quet gambles on sports like crazy. Online sports stuff. And then Quet tries to identify young rappers and tries to shop them to CMG, hoping to get a cut, hoping to hit it big. Years ago, he and his brother missed out on one of those big rappers. But Quet knew a young rapper who he was in the process of shopping to CMG. And that young rapper is Justin Johnson, who goes by straight drop. Sometimes I just call him drop. So Quet's the common person. He knows Cornelius from the neighborhood, knows him well, sells him drugs. He knows Justin Johnson. He's trying to get him to be the next CMG rapper. But not just that. The business is not just rap. Because Big Chook, the person I told you about before, the number two guy at CMG, He's put out a hit. A hit. $100,000 to whoever kills Dolph. He has met with Justin. He has met with Cornelius. They think they're ready to do it. They're definitely willing to do it. For Cornelius, it would be 50 grand, I guess, that he could waste away on purpose sets and ecstasy. For Justin, it's 50 grand, but also a chance to make it big with CMG to become the next famous Memphis rapper. Straight drop. They were sent here. They were sent here. They're not professional hitmen. 
not even monsters. I'm not going to call anybody a monster. This is just business for me, so money for Cornelius, money and rap fame for Justin Johnson. They did the best they could, really. Stolen car. Better to use a stolen car that can't be traced back to me. When we still shot the video, you'll see that they're wearing gloves. Afterwards, the guns get disappeared. The car gets ditched in a neighborhood and wiped down and moved and wiped down and moved. Their plan is to go their separate ways and just disappear into Memphis. They did the best they could. I guess I could have gotten away with it. You get the guns gone, you get the car wiped down, get the car hidden for long enough. You're wearing masks, you're wearing hoodies, you're wearing gloves. You do it so quick, but it takes seconds. You get in, you get out, you get separate, you get disappeared, and I guess you get away with it. There's a problem. There's a problem there. Still staring at us. One of the big problems. It's not 1981. It's not 1991. It's not even 2001 when I started in this building. It's 2021. It's 2021. And what I started talking to you about when I first stood up, what you didn't think about, what we don't think about, almost ever anymore, this place is a campus.